So looks like we found another planet. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty exciting discovery of a planet somewhere far away around a typical M-type star also known as a red dwarf. But this time the excitement is not from the planet or from the star but from the actual discovery itself and the technique that was used. So let's talk about what seems to be the first ever radio astrometry discovery and welcome to Odemac. Now obviously today, because we've discovered like thousands of different planets, it's somewhat difficult to get excited when we find a new one. But sometimes the scientists use a new technique, something that was never used before, and manage to discover something else unusual. So typically most of the planets today are discovered by using the transit technique, by looking at the shadows passing in front of the star. It's a very very successful technique, we've discovered over 4000 different planets already, and we're going to find thousands more. But as you can see in this list, the least successful technique so far has been so-called astrometry. And this is literally when you're looking at the star and trying to see the tiny minute variations in its motion across the night skies. And it's kind of like looking at the star dance around an imaginary circle in the middle. The reason this happens, of course, is because when there is a massive enough planet orbiting the star, it's going to pull at the planet just enough for the star to start moving a little bit as well. You can kind of see here, if I were to place Jupiter around a typical red dwarf, it will start moving just a little bit. It's maybe difficult to see, but if I were to zoom in here and also accelerate this just a little bit, you can kind of start seeing the little dances of Proxima Centauri. Now, just so you know, this is actually exactly what our Sun is doing right now because of the pulls of Jupiter. And this happens approximately every 12 years as Jupiter moves around the Sun. Theoretically, we think these variations are most easily visible when the star is not as massive, when the planet is more massive, and also when the planet is much, much farther away from the star itself. And so far, only one such planet was discovered to date, and this technique, because it's so difficult to use, hasn't really been um, advanced very much. But, you know, some scientists, they don't want to give up. And so the team that was using a network of telescopes in the US known as Very Long Base Array, with some of the telescopes located right here, for the first time ever were able to discover yet another planet using this technique. But this time they actually did not look at it in visual light, they used radio waves, because VLBA as it's known, is a network of radio telescopes, and they create a virtual telescope that's very very big in diameter. If you were to try to compare this to a typical telescope, the size of the aperture would be roughly around 8,000 kilometers or 5,000 miles in size. And that's because it's a virtual telescope that connects all of these separate pieces into one large telescope. And here they actually use very precise observations and also very precise atomic clocks to create extremely accurate images using radio waves. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention is that don't confuse astrometry with another similar technique that's very, very commonly used, known as radial velocity, which relies on the observations of redshift and blue shift effect. Here, they're not really looking at redshifting, they literally are looking at the wobbles that can only be seen by measuring the precise location of the star, and that's the difficult part here. Seeing the redshift is actually not that difficult, but trying to precisely see where the star is located, that's the biggest achievement here. In other words, for this particular study, the scientists were able to know exactly where the star was for a very long period of several months. And what they obviously discovered is that, well, it's wobbling. And it's wobbling every 220 days. And it's wobbling precisely as if it had a, a Saturn-like planet orbiting around it. And so let's talk about the actual discovery. So first of all, this is an M9 type dwarf. It's a flare star, a very active star that seems to produce a lot of energy. It also seems to produce unusual radio pulsations every once in a while, and these pulsations are extremely accurate. It's sort of like radio bursts every 7054 seconds. Although the origin is still being debated, but it's probably something to do with the orbital parameters of the star. The star itself is also really, really small. It's only about 80 masses of Jupiter, and that's about 8% of the mass of the Sun, 
So this is one of the cooler in terms of temperature and one of the less dim stars out there. So this is really the lowest sort of level of M-type stars. But then the scientists as they were looking at it discovered that the radio pulsations were actually slightly shifting across, they were moving around and when they tried to graph all of this, it started to appear this way. And there's really only one explanation to what's happening here, especially because all of this was happening exactly every 221 days. The explanation of course is that there is a planet in the orbit around the star. And the planet here, surprisingly, is really massive too. It's about half the mass of Jupiter, and it's very likely a Saturn-like gas giant. Now, we don't actually expect these M dwarfs to really have any Saturn or Jupiter-like planets, and we definitely don't expect them to be so far away from the star either. All of the simulations and models right now suggest that M-type stars would normally only have Earth-like planets or terrestrial planets in terms of mass. We never really expect them to have these giant planets in their orbit, so that's already mystery number one. Ah, uh, wait, no, that's mystery number two. Mystery number one are still the radio pulsations. And the third mystery here is in regards to the orbit of the planet. For some unknown reason, this planet is very highly inclined to the rotation of the star, with the angle here being about 70 to maybe 80 degrees. And that's very unusual. That's basically kind of if we were to look at our solar system, if Earth was orbiting in this way, this doesn't really make sense. It's as if the planet was captured from somewhere, or it's as if something else influenced its orbit sometime in the past. It's also possible that maybe there is another massive planet there that actually influenced the orbit over time, and so we might be able to find something else in this system. So there are really quite a lot of mysteries and questions about this unusual star system. Now right now we obviously have no idea what this planet looks like, we also will probably not know if there is anything else in this star system for quite a while, but as we investigate the system more we might be able to get some more answers about, well first of all formation of different types of planets around M-type stars, and remember these are the most common stars in the galaxy, so it's kind of important for us to understand what sort of planets they can have, and this might also help us understand if many of these red dwarfs have these giant planets, because we know from our own solar system that giant planets do influence star systems quite a lot. In one of the previous videos we investigated the idea that these giant planets can actually cause many of the terrestrial planets not to be formed at all, and we even found out that if Jupiter and Saturn didn't exist, there could have been as many as seven different habitable planets in our own solar system. So in other words, not all of these giants are good for star systems. Some of these giant planets could be detrimental to terrestrial planets in the star system. But also because this star system and this planet are somewhat close to us at a distance of about 35 light years away, it's very likely we're going to see a lot of follow-up studies and possibly even other investigations using similar techniques that might discover other unusual things about this star system and also other star systems in the vicinity. But also because the distance here is very similar to the TRAPPIST-1 system that has seven terrestrial planets around it, we might be able to apply similar techniques to try to see if we can discover something there as well. In other words, the so-called radio astrometry has now possibly reached a new level and it might allow us to find even more planets using this technique by listening to the tiny radio emissions created by the star and of course by seeing the wobbles in the night skies. And considering how minute these motions in the night skies are, it's very impressive that they were able to identify, no, very accurately identify the precise motions of the star in the night skies, a star that's really really far away from us. But as always you can learn more about the study, the scientists behind the study and of course the technique they used in the paper in the description below. So I guess until we learn more or until we discover something else using this unusual technique, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now as well, and either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.
And I'm sure you must have heard about this by now, but in other sad news, the beautiful Arecibo radio observatory has unfortunately been, well, partially destroyed, I guess? It was damaged by a cable that snapped and collapsed on top of the dish here. This doesn't really affect uh, the previously mentioned telescope as much, but because this radio observatory was used by other researchers, it unfortunately put a one-year pause on the radio research that was done in this observatory. So it's very likely we're going to miss a lot of really cool radio observations we could have been doing with this observatory as well. 